guys, my project this week is changing out the sacrificial cover to our Genoa, which is our main head sail. And the reason we're doing that is because if you notice from some of our videos or especially the aerial views from our drone, we still have the old Pacific blue canvas on there. It's the um, kind of like the UV protectant for the sail for when it's rolled up. Um, that way the sun isn't getting exposure to the sail itself and it's not getting UV damage and uh, disintegrating and making it less strong. So people will put these sacrificial sail covers, usually with umbrella or some other type of uh, marine canvas to protect those areas from the sun when the sail is in its rolled up form. When we bought Days Off, it didn't have any of the canvas remaining for the Dodger or Bimini, which is part of the reason that we did all of it ourselves. It originally was, I think, in Pacific Blue and Black, but we know for sure that the sails they were using on the boat were Pacific Blue. And since we're trying to get away from that, you can see that we've done the cockpit canvas in ginkgo green. We wanted to switch over and make it more of a uniform look because the Pacific Blue just wasn't matching very well. So originally the plan had been that we would take both our Genoa and our staysail and change the fabric over to the ginkgo green that we've been using in the other areas of the boat. But due to our staysail not quite fitting the boat 100% and the fact that it was just a really old sail and it wasn't working very well, we decided to get actually a new sail made for there. So after pricing out a few different locations and sending out to have a new staysail made for us, we ended up going with um, Far East out of Hong Kong. It ended up being the cheapest for us. And unfortunately, going with them, they did not offer the ginkgo green. It is kind of an off color. So uh, based on the colors they did have available and making everything kind of flow together on our boat. We chose to go with Cadet Gray, which is a really light gray that we thought would kind of blend in with the aluminum and hopefully not stand out too much against the ginkgo green. So then the job was for me to order some more Cadet Gray for the uh, staysail, which we would be doing ourselves. And then my job for the past month, I think it is now, has been to take off the Pacific Blue that was there already and start replacing it with the Cadet Gray. So the very first step for me after we lowered the sail is I kind of bunched it up in the cockpit with me as much as I can make it fit and then just went to work with my seam ripper, um, ripping out all of the old seams. And we were surprised to find out that it actually wasn't multiple pieces of fabric sewn together, that it was one continuous piece that had uh, double stitching on the top, double stitching on the bottom, and then a few vertical stitches as well. And then once you got towards the uh, corners of the sail for the clue and the tack, is that there's multiple layers of sail fabric there to add strength to the sail, so then it became a bit more difficult um, trying to get those seams ripped. But eventually I was able to get all of the old fabric off in one piece because that is what I was going to use as a template for tracing and cutting it onto the new cadet gray fabric. Getting the best estimate we could from the measurements we had taken of the sail and of the current sacrificial cover that was on there, we assumed that seven yards of the cadet gray fabric in a 60 inch width would be enough for us to be able to fully cover the fabric that we were replacing. So after trying to find out the best way to lay them out, we found out that I could get the entire foot part of the sail to span out across our seven yards. It was right around 20 feet long, so I had just a little bit of leeway on each end. But then for the leech of the sail, which runs from our deck all the way to the top of the fourth stay, was about 37 feet. So trying to spread that across approximately 21 feet of fabric. Unfortunately, we did have to cut that one down the middle and take pieces that were about 16 to 17 feet long and lay them next to each other. But the good news is that with the three panels together, we didn't go over the 60 inch width. And from there, I did my best to keep the Pacific Blue templates in place by taping and sometimes pinning and just took a fabric pencil and then traced all around before it was time to take out the hot knife to cut them down to the proper shapes. Did you get tired of helping me, Georgie girl? Matt's gonna handle the heavy machinery for me. Get it, Matt. 
But if you can see, we have friends that have an actual sail right hot knife, which works a lot better than our piece of crap uh, Harbor Freight one. Yeah, just a little bit. So, uh, we were lucky enough to be able to borrow it to cut this because this is a lot more fabric. Man, that thing's um, nice. Yeah. This is a lot more fabric than my little hot knife could have done without me pulling out my hair. That's it, we're gonna make our own sale. Uh -huh, totally. Tour, do you wanna stay away from that? Ah, oh, here we go. Yeah, look at that. So much better. I'm not gonna give this shit back. I have now turned the outdoor patio area into my sail off temporarily. I forgot they've got all these tables that they use for holiday get togethers to set up food, so I kind of stole them for the day. And as you can tell, yesterday, with a little bit of Matt's help, I was able to get the uh, top part of the foot sewn on. This is just a temporary kind of a crappy job because we will end up using a friend's uh, zigzag sail right to do the final one. That was just kind of to get it on there. And for the bottom now of the foot, I'm trying to take my pins and just get that pin in place. So for the bottom of the foot now, I'm trying to take uh, pins and just kind of loosely put it in place until I can, again, temporarily sew it. And I've been using my awl there to get through the fabric of the canvas and the sail and the canvas again since it's pretty thick. So it's a long process, it's slow, but at least it's moving forward. While well, Jessica was in LA for the weekend, I thought it would probably be the perfect time to go through and refinish our floors. When we originally constructed them, we did a single layer of epoxy just as kind of a protective barrier while we were still working on the interior. Now that is scuffed up, looks pretty nasty, and we actually hadn't filled the plugs where we screwed down the, the individual boards themselves. So I went through, sanded them down, filled in each one of the plugs, sanded it some more, and uh, then it was time to start applying the uh, build-up coats of the UV uh, epoxy. We still use kind of a polyurethane on top, uh, typical thing that you would, but for the first layers, uh, in, in this case three, we actually use uh, a clear epoxy. Now the issue that I ran into is, unfortunately, um, I hadn't used the epoxy in a while, and uh, neglected to actually read the instructions or remember it properly, the, the ratio. When I mixed it together, I uh, did not add enough hardener. So now this layer is kind of floating on a still liquid layer of epoxy. So you can see these ripples and so on. It's actually soft. Uh, so this entire thing has to be stripped back down, which is what I'm doing over here. So this is the first board I'm trying to go through and redo, stripping off all the epoxy I just applied, uh, vinegar wash, then I'll go through and resand it, um, clean it up again, and this time I'm going to have Jessica mix the epoxy, because she's usually better than I am, and uh, hopefully that will will uh, be the last time I have to touch these for a, for a while. But the worst part is living like this right now. Since our floor is up, all we have are the bare metal pieces to walk across um, while we're in the galley, in the kitchen, um, trying to cook dinner and so on. There's actually nothing to stand on right now. I could put a temporary floor, but when I originally thought this was going to be a day project, it didn't make sense. Little uh, scraper blade on an oscillating tool uh, apparently removes bad epoxy jobs. <laughs> Definitely not the way a uh, two-day-old epoxy is supposed to look. Can we get a closer look at that? Huh? Can we get a closer look at that? Yeah! Here you want to see the whole ball of <laughs> nasty, gross epoxy. So, 
The top two layers, great. Bottom layer, not so good. Uh, yep. I was and just too excited to have my wife back. <laughs> and this is how we lose work and stay here forever is because all those jobs. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Grant, yeah, you know already we do things twice, well, that, sometimes three times. Yep. So, like I said, everything we do, we do wrong the first time and then... But, you know, this is the problem is this wasn't something we were supposed to learn on. We've done this a yeah. hundred times before. It's just no. We we knew the lesson and we didn't follow it, and that's never have Matt mix anything. <laughs> yeah, not so good at ratios. No, nope, we already know that Jessica's a mix master. So uh -huh. next time. DJ mix master Jess. DJ Jazzy Jess mix master. Yeah. Getting coat number two on of round number two. But well, that's okay because we had Mix Master Jessica mix up the epoxy, so this hopefully, time it will be right. Hopefully it's right. Of course it's going to be right. I did it. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. A little Miss Khaki over here. Yeah. You'll uh, see. How's your uh, sale going? <laughs> Good thing it lays down all right. Self levels. Self leveling epoxy. Thick coats. Nice thick coats. Good looking shiny. If I could give one piece of advice if I went back and started this over, and I don't know why it took me this long to get to this point, actually it was Matt reminding me, I would have watched the video. Instructions are helpful. Um, I guess I thought since I was just taking something that existed and duplicating it and replacing it that it would just be super easy and it turns out this project has been an absolute pain in the ass. Unfortunately, I have been working on it for close to three weeks now. When I thought start to finish, it would be about a week. Uh, one of the hardest things I've been dealing with is getting the fabric to lay exactly where I want it to and to stay there, especially without bunching. I've been using, or I have tried a few different types of the basting tape from Sailrite. I've tried their like sail makers tape, their vinyl tape, their canvas tape in uh, three eighths, so slightly thicker. And if it was in a perfect world and I was in a sail loft and everything was staying on like a relatively flat and smooth surface and I just had to slide it into machine. I'm sure those would have worked great but because I'm here outside and my sail is constantly getting bunched up and I'm like yanking on it to try and get it to the machine it unfortunately um, that wasn't working. The pins I realized um, they would just create bunching so as I ran it through the machine um, it wouldn't end up coming out how I wanted it later. So of course I go back and I watch the sale rate video and they had a most brilliant idea which would have saved me so much time and so much misery if I knew from the start and that is using 3M adhesive spray. The same stuff that we use for our cushions to get the um, multiple layers of the foam to stick together and also when we put our batten material on. So luckily we happen to have a can with us because the cushions for the pilot house are my next project. So um, broke that out today and working on that now. Not really loving today though because I had this great area on the patio. Um, if you'd seen earlier scenes, I had these nice like folding tables to set up so I could have the sails raised all at one level and it was great. And then I was told that the owner didn't want me to use those. Okay, property of the marina, I get it. Um, moved back to the ground on the patio, spent yesterday kind of working on that, set myself up there today and then was told by the owner that I'm not allowed to work in that space. So now I have been kicked out to the parking lot. Um, kind of an uneven surface, a lot dirtier. Not really too happy about that, but honestly, I just want to get this project done so I can move on to the next. I have spent way, way, way too much time on this one so far.
Right now I'm just kind of hand stitching a small line in until I can get the sewing machine out to uh, sail the rest of this on, but I have to say the 3M adhesive spray is working absolutely amazing. It would have made my life a million times easier had I started using it from the beginning. And it unfortunately looks like my work day is going to get cut short here a little bit, starting to get sprinkled on, which kind of sucks because I was just starting to make progress too. We have a new present. Present? Present will indicate that it was something that we didn't pay for. Okay, well we have something fun and new in the mail, something much yeah. needed. And that is our new stasel which just came in from Hong Kong. So this is one I luckily did not have to put the protective fabric on because I would have lost my mind. Yeah. Let's see if it was right. Ooh, pretty little bag, it matches the boat. It does. That's what I was looking for. Well, I know it's what I look for. Yeah. A shop based on bag alone. <laughs> wow, that is a crisp looking sail. It is. What do you think of the new sail, Georgie? Getting a little closer every day to finishing this thing. Unfortunately, a lot of it's been uh, done by hand. Can't say that working on the ground here has done me many favors in keeping the sail clean. You can see all the dust that keeps uh, blowing on me from the parking lot as I work. And somewhere along the line, I must have scraped across a rock or something because you can see now I've had to start adding this patch as well, which is unfortunate. But we can't say this was the newest or best sail to begin with. Just gonna kind of last us until we can save up enough funds to buy ourselves a new uh, Genoa. So I guess it is what it is and hopefully I will be finishing this project very soon here. Look at my beautiful jumble of a sail and it's only uh, all spread apart like this and bunched up because it means I am just about finished. Um, and I was kind of working on all corners at once just finishing up last little things but I normally had it rolled up. And I have been doing really well with my machine for a bit, but near the ring here, it just got through too many layers of fabric and my needle broke, so I ended up having to not do as many stitches as I wanted to. You can kind of see where they have other lines that I didn't get to follow very much, but I didn't want to break more than the whole pack of needles I had, so just left it as it is. But across here you can see that the leech of the sail has actually turned out pretty nice. This is the one that I spent the most time on like pinning and doing the 3M spray. But now I was able to go through with our friend's um, LSZ1 sail right machine. Got some nice zigzag stitching there and hopefully once we get it up it will follow the 5 or 10 foot rule where any little misgivings are no longer seen. Well, there she is now up in place. Kind of was just putting lipstick on a pig. Didn't really notice like how dirty or worn out that sail was, I guess. But at least uh, she matches the boat now. No more Pacific blue. My project is now over, but there's really not much holding us back at the dock now. So I guess we can start our preparations to leave here. <laughs> 